Today we're going to do the fastest tutorial on multiprocessing in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be a bit of a speed run today. If you are interested in a longer, more detailed video on multiprocessing, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I don't want to get too much into the technicalities here, but essentially in Python, we have multi-threading and we have multi-processing. Multi-threading doesn't allow for actual parallelism because of the global interpreter log. At least when we have CPU bound tasks, this is not really um, an actual solution to the problem. Multiprocessing actually uses multiple processes and allows for true parallelism when solving tasks. And in this video today, I want to present you a couple of different classes from the multiprocessing module, and I want to show you how and when to use them. The first class I want to talk about is the pool class, and we're going to import it like this. We're going to import time, we're going to import math, and from multiprocessing, we're going to import pool. But before we go ahead and use the pool, let me show you a serial example using a single process. We have here the factorial operation, so math.factorial being applied to numbers from 0 to 11,999, so to 12,000 numbers, and we store the results in a list and calculate how long it takes. When I run this, you can see it takes almost nine seconds, which is quite a long time. What we can do instead is we can do that with five processes by using a pool of processes. So I can say with pool five SP, then I can say P dot map the factorial function, same function as here onto the same collection list range of 12,000. So we have the same numbers, the same function. We just use the map function here of the pool, which means five processes are going to do that in parallel. To make sure we get the same results, let us also make this check here, make sure that all the values of results one and result two are the same. And there you go, the results are the same. The first run took 9.1 seconds, and the parallelized run with five processes, 2.9 seconds. This is a classic example for using pools. The second class I wanna talk about is the process class. It allows us to create a process with a target function. In this case here, we have a watchdog function that prints in this case with the argument five here, every five seconds, a heartbeat, meaning it's alive. And also in the main process here, we do the same calculation from before. When I run this, you can see that we get the heartbeat every five seconds while the results are being calculated. So it's running in parallel. There you go. Next up, we have the queue. The queue is used for, well, queuing elements and using them with multiple processes. In this case here, we have a producer function and a consumer function used by two different processes. So a very simple example here, the producer just queues up items into the queue every 0.2 seconds and the consumer uses them, consumes them, dequeues them, whatever every second. And that is like the hello world example of using a queue with multiprocessing. Of course, in an actual use case, we would actually be processing the numbers, maybe doing calculations, maybe database queries, whatever. But here is the idea of in queuing items in dequeuing items, you can see here, the producer is much faster, the consumer can then take the items from the queue. And this can be quite useful if you want to process things even with multiple processes in a specific order. To show you that this works, let me create here a second consumer. So consumer one, consumer two, consumer one, consumer two, consumer one and consumer two, and still we're going to get the same output. So the consuming is going to be happening in the exact same order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because that is what the queue ensures. Another interesting thing to know about is the pipe. The pipe is essentially a communication channel between processes. So here we have a worker function that has a connection as a parameter. And over this connection, it sends information at the end, it closes the connection. And in the parent process here, we receive from this connection. The idea is that this communication channel is a pipe. So we create a pipe and then we create a process and pass the pipe here as a connection. And now the child process and the parent process can communicate with one another. If you want to have this two way communication, so the parent also being able to send to the child, you want to use the keyword argument duplex equals true. Sometimes when you have multiple processes working with the same resource, it makes sense to use a lock. So we're going to take a look at the lock and the value classes. Here we have a worker function. What it does is it takes the counter value and increases it by one 
100,000 times and we have four processes running this worker. So we would expect 400,000 to be the result. However, since these are constantly interfering with one another, values are being reset, changes are not being applied, and we get some random result if we don't use a lock. So if I just run this here, you will see I get 145,777. Uh, well, then I can run it again and I get a different value only if I use a lock, only if I create a lock here and I use it here with the with keyword, only then is it going to be ensured that one process at a time is editing the value, not more than it's shared and synchronized here. Uh, I mean, this is shared and synchronized, but here we make sure that only a single process can edit this at once and we get 400,000 as expected. And finally, we have the semaphore, which is a bit like a lock, but it works with multiple instances. So instead of limiting to a single connection, we can limit to two, three, four connections. In this case here, two workers are allowed at the same time. What this means is we have some processes here, six to be precise, and we allow for two simultaneous um, acquirings of the semaphore, if you want to call it that. We do it here again, like with a lock with semaphore. And we can see if I run this here, we can see zero waiting for semaphore, one waiting for semaphore. Then the semaphore value is decreased every time a connection is accepted, so to say. When we have zero, all of these are waiting only after zero and uh, one left. So only after zero left, we had an additional place here then two entered, one left, three entered, and so on. So we always have only two of the workers simultaneously being able to acquire the semaphore. This can be used in the same way as a lock can be used, but maybe you don't want to limit the resource to only a single worker, maybe you want to limit it to five workers for whatever reason. So that's it for this quick multiprocessing speedrun today. Again, if you want to see a more detailed course or video on multiprocessing, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.